Finding out who's responsible for excessive memory usage is sometimes not so easy in a complex application. When you look at classes and their instances, you see what classes actually consume most of the memory, but you do not get a picture of the references that keep them in place. Here we see a memory snapshot of the Eclipse IDE, and it's mostly strings, byte arrays, and generic maps. It's quite common that the objects that make up most of the heap of strings and primitive arrays. The problem is that this does not tell you anything about where they were allocated. By nature, the heap is a graph that is held in place by references from garbage collector routes, such as static fields or references from the Java stack. Showing this entire graph is not feasible and would not be useful. Luckily, there's a clever analysis that identifies certain instances that keep most other instances alive. This is the dominator analysis and JProfiler uses it to calculate data for the biggest objects view in the heapwalker. In the dominator tree, each object is only kept alive by the reference chain of its ancestors. Removing any object in this tree would lead to all descendant nodes being garbage collected. Some references are labeled as transitive references. This means that in between that node and its parent, References fan out over multiple objects, each of which does not dominate any objects by itself. This tree view is great if we are looking for memory leaks, but there is a lot of text and reference patterns are difficult to recognize. If we want to focus on visualizing memory usage, a more compact kind of display is needed. That's why this view has two modes, the tree view and the sunburst diagram. The biggest objects are listed on the right side and are shown in the innermost ring of the diagram. Hovering over the list highlights the objects in the graph. The largest chunk of memory in this Eclipse instance is consumed by the Maven indexer, followed by the save manager. If the current object set is the entire heap, the circumference corresponds to the total heap size. The missing part consists of the objects that are not part of the dominator tree due to the way they are referenced, as well as smaller objects that are not shown in order not to overload the diagram. If you hover over the ring segments, details for the selected object will be shown on the right, and the list below will show directly dominated objects. These dominated objects are shown right on top in the next ring of the graph. You can hover over any ring segment to display this kind of information. There are, of course, more references beyond the outermost ring that are not shown, but you can click on any ring segment to make it the new root of the diagram. Then you can see more levels from that point on. The root is now described on the right, and the list below shows its directly dominated objects. The circumference now corresponds to the total retained memory of the selected root, and not to the total heap size. You can set more roots to move deeper into the dominator tree. Clicking on the center of the diagram takes you to the previous root. One more root change and we arrive at the current object set. In this case it's the all object set. Ring segments have different colors. Orange ring segments are objects. There is a slight striping in order to make rings visible more clearly, but both shades of orange denote objects. Red is used for object arrays and gray for primitive arrays. Primitive arrays are always leaf nodes because they do not reference any other objects. If there are very many objects at one level, JProfila groups them into green nodes for smaller objects. This helps to avoid the diagram from being overloaded. Just like in the tree view, you can create a new object set based on a selected object. Just right click a ring segment and choose from the available options. The Biggest Objects view can also calculate the biggest objects separately for each class loader. If we activate that mode, the innermost ring will be colored in purple and show class loader instances. For example, we can now analyze the biggest objects of the boot class loader. Most of them are related to jar and zip files. Also, the Biggest Objects view can group all references by classes. 
Let's have a look at the element cache of the Java model in Eclipse. It dominates a lot of cache entries. Their structure is extremely fine and JProfiler groups smaller ring segments to avoid an overload of the diagram. It would be useful to only see a single ring segment per class. This can be done with the Group by Classes feature. Now we see a single node for the cache entries and the complex structure has been simplified. As you can see, sunburst diagrams are a great way of exploring memory consumption, getting a feeling for the memory layout, and to prepare visualizations of memory problems.